time, Maryland now has formal guidelines about how schools should conduct active shooter drills. 7 News' Kelly Lynn takes a look at the changes and spoke with a Bethesda student about how these drills affect him. Here's a closer look at the best practice guidelines for active assailant emergency preparedness. The 26 page document published by the Maryland Center for School Safety makes specific recommendations for active assailant drills. Well, I know they're important, so I'm, I'm glad we have them. The guidelines specify that active assailant drills must be announced, designed in a manner that is developmentally and age appropriate, not simulate gunfire or explosions, not include individuals posing as active assailants, and not include other activities that may cause trauma to students or staff. Max Eckstein is a 16 year old at Walter Johnson High School in Bethesda. For an active shooter drill, we close the blinds, we make sure all the windows are you know, locked, blinds are down, turn off the lights. Eckstein tells me the drills don't negatively affect his mental health. Over the next five years, MCSS is collaborating with the University of Maryland's National Center for School Mental Health to learn more about how active shooter drills affect students and staff. So there will be a survey that is given to all students, staff, and parents after a lockdown drill is conducted at a school to determine um, effectiveness of the procedure and then the impact, um, the psychological and emotional impact on individuals. Buckheit says the surveys will be sent out in January. For 7 News, I'm Kelly Lynn. And we're told that students or staff who are uncomfortable with active shooter drills can opt out.